Hey, good morning. I uh, just wanted to recap, you know, there's a, a good uh, break that we've had this week uh, in terms of uh, getting our legs under us and, and focusing on our studies and getting through finals. So since last Saturday, you know, we had Sunday off, uh, practice hard Monday, Tuesday. Uh, yesterday, we had another off day. It was a loaded day with finals. Uh, so got those things knocked out and, and you know, Thursday, Today, I guess, uh, we go back to work and focus on UMass. Tomorrow, we'll, we'll travel out to Springfield, uh, practice out there, and, and have a shoot-around as well on Saturday. So uh, we still got two days uh, to, prep, to, to prep for for UMass and, and uh, a friendly foe, so to speak. You know, some someone I really look up to and someone I've worked with uh, in Frank Martin, a person that, uh, uh, you know, I, I, I value a lot in his friendship and his loyalty over the years and someone I've learned from as a young GA working at Kansas State uh, with him and and uh, our staff there at Kansas State. So looking forward to that matchup and, and excited to, to see him and some friendly faces there. Um, as uh, concerning yesterday, you know, everyone saw the ruling that came out of the U.S. District Court. Uh, really happy for Ray and, and the courage that it took for him to pursue his eligibility status and, and stand up there on, on, on you know, as, as and testify. So you heard me say all along that Ray could, should be playing basketball. And I, I truly believe that that's very important to him and his mental health. And I, I think he's met that criteria uh, for immediate eligibility. And like the statement we put out yesterday said, you know, we are consulting with our counsel and, and outside counsel before we make any determination on the eligibility status of our, you know, student athletes that are affected as part of this decision. So um, we're trying to get some of those questions answered and, and but unfortunately uh, I don't have much to add uh, outside of what we put out as a statement. And uh, I know I saw last night that the several schools uh, played their affected student athletes and some had sat them out. So um, we're still in limbo, and I think there's a lot of schools out there still in limbo trying to figure out what those answers and or get those those questions they have answered. So, fortunately, we don't play till Saturday evening, and, and we're hoping to get those answers uh, sooner than later. We'll take questions. We'll first go to Greg Hunter. So, Josh, sort of double down on that a little bit. So, your thought right now about playing Graquan on Saturday, and then obviously Noah. Uh, is also impacted on this. What, what, do you think that he plays this year for you guys? You know, I don't know. It's uh, just needs some more clarity uh, more than anything, because we got to, you know, selfishly, we can sit here and think, you know, they could really, both of them could really help us, but uh, we got to think about the student athlete and how it affects their, their overall eligibility. You know, Raekwon's got one year of eligibility left. Uh, Noah's got two. And so those conversations, uh, will have to be had, excuse me, have to be had with uh, those student athletes, their families, and our our uh, department to, to figure out what's best for them and, and uh, as, you know, us as a whole, as a program. Kevin Kinder. Josh, I understand you don't want to talk specifics on each one of their cases, but in general, are the things that you're still seeking clarity on, are they other eligibility issues? Are they just how this impacts or how it could work going forward. Obviously, you just mentioned what the student athletes' wishes are, and that's important too. But uh, uh, what are a couple of the other areas where you're still seeking clarity? It's mainly the eligibility. I mean, if we, you know, even in the 14 days we play three games, if, uh, you know, the, the decision is overturned and, and they play during this course of the season and, and they lose that year of eligibility, that doesn't seem like, uh, we made the right decision by the student athlete. And so I want all the facts to be laid out for everybody involved uh, before we make those decisions. I think that's just the right way to uh, handle things and approach things. Justin Jackson. Coach, um, well, two things. Uh, as part of the ruling yesterday, I mean, obviously the, the, the 14 days on the uh, restraining order, uh, the second part, was of the um, um, I forget the name of it uh, where, where um, they also put a restraining order on the NCAA's ability to basically punish schools to um, that would play athletes during these fourteen days. Doesn't that sort of kind of 
cover some of the issues that you guys might be looking at? Yeah, and no, I don't think we've got 100% clarity on that as well, but I, the indications are and reports are that, yes, the, the institutions are protected during a 14-day 14 14 window, but the biggest question to me is is uh, the eligibility, eligibility concerns and, and whether that would burn a year uh, by, by playing in, those, in that 14-day window. I see. Okay. Uh, and the other thing is, uh, I'm sure you got a chance to talk with uh, Raekwon yesterday. I mean, obviously an emotional day for him yesterday. Uh, can you share like what his reactions were, his emotions were? And, you know, that's a huge day for him yesterday. It was a huge day and a huge day. He's the face of the, you know, this entire uh, process. And, uh, you know, I'm really proud of him. I told him that for certain and, you know, how he's approached this and, and he's done this with uh, so much class and integrity. So, you know, that was the biggest message to, to him. It took a lot out of him. <clears throat> it certainly took a lot out of him, you know, in his mental state, you know, uh, having that courage to go up there and, and testify and, and uh, put himself out there. It took a lot out of him. So I think the nerves kind of got to him and, and uh, he didn't feel all that well and spent most of the rest of the, the evening resting. So, uh, I, I'm hearing he's feeling a lot better this morning. Uh, I look forward to catching up with him, and, and we got practice this afternoon. So I think he'll be in the weight room, room, weight room here shortly uh, working out. So I look forward to getting down there and seeing him and giving him a big hug. Hey, one last thing, Coach. Uh, you know, kind of like you said, he's kind of become the, the, the face of, uh, of this issue, which has suddenly become a national issue now. I mean, this is bigger than just obviously WVU. Uh, in terms of the scope of the the schools and and what it could mean down the line with what the NCAA does with with the transfer rules and and eligibility rules, do you think he's comfortable being the face of something that's completely bigger than just his eligibility issue now? I don't think he wanted to be by any means. I mean, this isn't the route he chose. Um, I was very. Um, forthright and, and from through the whole process saying, you know, I thought this was a, you know, open and shut case. I thought it'd be a rubber stamp issue from the NCAA with uh, the specifics of this particular case. By no means, I didn't, I didn't think Raekwon wanted to push this thing this far, but uh, he's fighting for what he believes is right. And, um, you know, I'm here to support him in any way he can. Does, does he want to be, does he want that att attention? I don't, I don't think he does by any means, but, um, you know, I'm just, you know, really proud of him for taking it this far and, and doing what he thinks is right and, and fighting for, you know, his rights, you know, in the court of law. And then also uh, being that person that then can, um, you know, be that face that uh, represents so many other kids that are in the same boat. Thank you, Coach. Appreciate it. Great Hunter. Josh, obviously Kerr comes back. Saturday as well. You may have uh, Raekwon and Noah. So how are you guys different as a team? What what style is different? And will it take a little while to, to sort of get everybody to meld together? Um, I, You know, they've been practicing together. It's not like they've been sitting out. So they practice and compete against each other each and every day. And, and I switch up those rosters whenever I can uh, to make it as competitive as possible. So it's not like they've been sitting out and haven't been able to practice. So I, I don't see that as a huge issue, you know, from every indication of, of encounter I've had with all the rest of the guys. I mean, they're ultra excited. I mean, those guys are really close. It's a close, you know, close knit locker room. So uh, everybody cheers each other on and you know, wants to be a part of a winning program. And they know having depth and, and having our weapons, you know, at our disposal is certainly going to help us do that. Uh, so I, I don't see any issue trying to get everybody uh, on the same page and, and, you know, clicking on all cylinders. Now, you know, in terms of getting that game day rust, I mean, it could be an issue because, I mean, it's been, it's you know, they've missed nine games. So, you know, Kerr got a chance to play a couple, you know, with our close scrimmage and, and George Mason, but uh, Noah and, and Ray, if they're eligible to play, they, they haven't got that uh, game time experience for quite some time. So um, that would be the only issue that I see. But uh, those guys, like I said, they compete each and every day in practice and, and 
they've been ultra competitive and ultra locked in every single day. It's not like they're 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 going through the motions by any means. So I'm excited uh, for their opportunity if that uh, presents itself. So if all three of those guys are playing, how different is your style from what we've seen in the first nine? Yeah, I think it's it's a lot faster. I mean, we we were really you know we had to by default had to really slow everything down to be competitive and with our lack of depth. So, you know, we're still transitioning a cook back. Uh, so that gives us depth that, you know, in the forward position, and if we had Noah and Ray with depths, the guards, I mean, we could, uh, we, we're going to have a lot fresher legs out there. So I anticipate, anticipate, anticipate playing a lot faster than we have uh, in this first nine games. So, um, and, and certainly it's a lot easier as a coaching staff to hold guys accountable to what they need to be doing out there if, if you got people to replace them. Mike Casaza. Hey, Josh, how are you? Good, how are you, Mike? Good, man. Um, just kind of a, a strange question, but um, what, are you just looking forward to practice today? It's, this seems like a unique a unique day in your tenure. It's, it's actually good news. Um, it's been the opposite for a while, and I think I actually see a smile on your face right now too, which has been. Yeah, I mean, I, I woke up. <laughs> I didn't sleep all that good, and mainly because you know you sit sit there and think through all the scenarios and, and try to manage them all from a coaching perspective, and that's a good problem to have. Uh, so, you know, I'm I'm cautiously optimistic, uh, but it does give you uh, rebirth or relife, so to speak. And you know, when you sit down in the coach's meeting and you start thinking about the different scenarios and options you have, it certainly puts a smile on everybody's face in the room. And, and so it gives us some new life and, and we're excited uh, about the possibility. Now, like I said, cautiously optimistic, but uh, we hope we're going in the right direction and, and we have uh, closer to what we consider a full roster. And then um, just to kind of put you on the spot, if you don't mind, you're, you're in this position now where you can take transfers and you never know if they're going to play or not. But if, if you had a, a say in the matter, if you could write the rule book, how would you handle transfers legislatively? I, I personally, I mean, I think they, sh you know, just like any coach can can leave at any given time. I, mean, I think it's uh, to to their discretion if if they want to leave a program. But, uh, I believe they have the right to do so. And um, you know, I've I've said over the years, if if, if kids don't want to be here, you know, it, it's hard to coach them. So uh, if they if they're not happy with where they're, where they're at, uh, what's the point in trying to force the issue? But then once they join your team, I'm sorry, Mike. Go ahead. No, just once they join your team, the whole eligibility matter. That's that's quite a bird's nest, I understand. But the year in residence has maybe competitively good things, but it can also ensnare people for the wrong reasons, as you as you found out. Any idea like how you would how you would handle that? I'm sorry. What was the question? Just like, like how, if would, should guys be eligible to move freely? Should they have to sit out of there? Should there be parameters? Should it be you know what's the word wanton and capricious uh, as, as that's been alleged? Well, I don't. I don't think by any means there should be. You should be able to play for two teams in any one given year. But uh, from year to year, I don't see any problem. Like personally, uh, with the way uh, guys could have the freedom to pick up and, and go if they weren't happy, and and, and vice versa. I mean, it's obviously. From a coaching perspective, and uh, we we have there's no ramifications for us picking up and going. Uh, so I don't know why uh, we would hold those players to that uh, a different uh, standard. John Lowe. I guess that's me. Um, curious, uh, Josh. What um, what do you see from UMass? What challenges do they present? Well, I mean, it's, it's the one crippling one that uh, always stands out. They're really good at offensive rebounding. They're top 10 in the country and, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, and second chance points. So uh, we, we've worked diligently, in which we have all season, which uh, doesn't seem to be setting in. So we need to may, maybe take a different approach than we kind of have this week, but we got we got to shore up our defensive rebounding. Um, they, they they're they're good. You know, they're also top ten in the country in points off turnovers. So they're going to turn up the heat. And I understand Frank and his uh, approach to a lot of things uh, in terms of defensive end. So they are going to get up in you and try to force force the issue and make you uncomfortable and take things away that uh, might try to blow up your offense. So um, we're very mindful of all those things and and how he'll probably approach you know what we have you know bring what we bring to the table offensively. So. Um, yeah, this should be a battle. I mean, you know, 
consequently that they, they turn people over and, and, and score off people's turnovers. Uh, but they also send, send people to the line. Uh, and, and I think they, uh, their opponents average 26 uh, free throw attempts a game. And so we've done a pretty good job of getting the line outside of that Drexel game. Uh, that was kind of an anomaly, so to speak. So, uh, but otherwise, you know, they're sending teams to the line with how aggressive they play defensively. So uh, they're, they're, they're scoring off turnovers, but they're also sending people into the line. So it's a double-edged sword. Real quick, a player or two that really concerns you for them? Uh, Matt Cross. Uh, they're four, man. They, they're four and five. Uh, they're, they're both, you know, veteran guys. They're two seniors on their roster. So uh, Josh Cohen, they're, they're five, man, is, a, is one of their key players. Matt Cross is, is another one. That's a matchup uh, issue for us. Um, he doesn't shoot it extremely well, um, but he's big, physical, 6'7", 230, and, and Plays a lot lower than a lot of, a lot of kids, and, and uh, he can play a little bully ball and, and get what he needs done. Uh, so, yeah, he's uh, averaging 16 points a game, 58% from the field, and, and uh, 7.6 rebounds. So that four position has been kind of a, an issue for us trying to figure out the right uh, right personnel to, to handle those type of guys. So uh, that's the issue that I see with, with Matt Cross. Ryan Decker. Coach, do you worry about guys like Kerr and possibly Raekwon and or Noah who are coming back? Do, do you worry about them maybe pressing a little bit, especially on the offensive end, just trying to make up for lost time as they get back into, into things? That's certainly a conversation I'll have with all those guys. You know, don't try to act like uh, or feel that pressure to, <clears throat> to do anything more than the team needs you to do. So, um, yeah, I mean, you know, once you, uh, you know, get checked in for the first time or, or, or that ball tips up for the first time and it's been a long time since those guys have seen action, I'm um, sure the, the emotions will probably, you know, set in pretty pretty strong. So um, I'll try to have, and our, our coaching staff does a great job trying to keep everybody level-headed. We'll, we'll have those conversations with those guys and just kind of tell them to let the game come to them. So um, hopefully we have a smooth transition. It's, it's, it's It would be, you know, in the event that it happens, it would be, you know, something you don't see every day trying to transition three guys into a, uh, a rotation you know, all at once. Bob Herzl. Yeah, Josh. Yeah. Um, you mentioned that Raekwon was the face of, uh, of this and, you know, that it kind of got to him yesterday after, after te testify. Uh, you've been the face of the university on this pretty much. And this wasn't what, you know, your first chance to coach in this, I mean, it wasn't exactly what you were looking forward to uh, or probably expected in any way. How has it affected you? I mean, you mentioned, you know, not sleeping last night, trying to think things up. Has it, has it, has it personally affected you? Well, I mean, yeah, I, I can't lie. I mean, there's, there's a lot of challenges that uh, I've went through that uh, has it affected me? Probably a little, um, but um, I like I go home to a wife that's got a great head on her shoulders and and puts things in perspective and and uh, so um, I got that going for me and and I look at a lot of these things as a, a, a huge growth opportunity for myself as well. You know, so many people say you know coaches can go a decade and not go through the type of challenges you went through in an amount of six months. So um, I don't look at that that way. I just look at it as, you know, I got to take care of business in the best way possible and represent this university the best way possible and, and my family the best way possible each and every day. And, you know, I've you know, been tabbed with this, uh, this challenge and this opportunity. And uh, what I need to do is just make the, as good a decisions each and every day that puts us in this position to be successful. You've kind of, uh, you kind of, I assume thought you knew what coach player relationships were like and, and that coming in, but has that grown with you? The, the realization that, that how important you are to coach, especially when you hear Raycon talk about he much, how much he relied on sprinkle before and, and what you've had to do with him and for him. Yeah, it's definitely taken to a new level. I mean, one, it's one thing to be an assistant coach and have those relationships or support staff and have those relationships, but <laughs> the relationship goes to a whole new level, especially when you're fighting uh, tooth and nail for a kid and a kid that 100% deserves 
to have the opportunity to express himself on the floor and, and, and the name of competition. So uh, we, we've come together and, you know, it was a, it was a very natural relationship from, from day one, if we're speaking about Raekwon uh, specifically. Uh, it, it, and that's not just Raekwon. I mean, I've built great relationships with each and every one of these guys on our roster. So, uh, but Raekwon's situation is, is different and unique. And, and from day one, we kind of hit it off and we had that, uh, we had our, our ties and our history and how we kind of had to navigate some of those issues. So, um, you know, it's, you, you, you look at so many of these kids and, and, and you care so deeply about them and just want them to have the opportunity to be successful in life. And uh, at the end of the day, it's, it's kind of like your own kids. You just sit back and smile when everything works out well and, and you just soak it in. And um, that was kind of the day we had yesterday. You know, you listen to his testimony and, and he puts himself out there and does everything he can. And, and we as an institution, as a coaching staff, have fought tooth and nail to, to make things right by Raekwon. So uh, days like that are, are rewarding and you look back and you just smile and, and hope things work out uh, even further in, in his in his way because he is an outstanding human being. Uh, it's a pleasure to coach each and every day. And, and those are the guys that uh, you're happy to do so, you know, and, and, and stand side by side with. John Lowe. John, we're unable to hear you. Uh, let's go to Greg Carey. Yeah, Josh, just curious, how from Wednesday to Friday, how close do you monitor what some of these other schools are doing with the their transfers? I believe UNLV played one last night, and, and how does that impact in the decision leading into Saturday? Well, every every situation is different. I mean, UNLV might you know have had that conversation and and understood the risks and associated with that uh, conversation, and they chose to do so. So. Um, I'm not going to make a rash decision that will affect a, a kid's future uh, by any means without knowing all the, the facts and details. So uh, there has been a lot of phone calls and late night calls with, with coaches that understand that we're at the forefront of this, uh, this, this battle with, uh, you know, with Raekwon. So uh, they've called and asked our, our advice and, and that's, you know, we're all kind of in the same, same boat. You know, we don't really have answers. So, uh, they want to know what we we are going to do, but you know, from an institutional standpoint and from a coaching staff standpoint, we're gonna we're gonna do right by understanding the facts of the situation before we make any crazy decision. Back to Justin. Hey, Coach. Uh, I'm assuming you were up in Wheeling yesterday. Or, or I was you? not. Okay. Uh, well, this might be kind of an unfair question then. Um, did you find during Raekwon's testimony? Did you find it odd at all that very few of the questions that were asked of him were about mental health? It's that it seemed to be more about NIL uh, driven uh, uh, the questions asked to him by the NCAA lawyers. Yeah. I don't know. You know, I don't know where they're going with all this. Um, it, it did seem to stray a little bit from uh, his file and the reason why he should or should not be eligible. Um but, you know, I don't know if that's a great representation of, of what the NCAA and what their thought process is. So uh, I'm going to take all that with a grain of salt. And, uh, you know, yeah, I thought I thought Ray did a great job handling himself up there and, and composed himself well. And and uh, that ain't easy for, for anyone, let alone a 20-year-old, uh, you know. So, uh, you know, just like I said, I was proud of him for fighting for his rights. And, and that's where we're at. Uh, I, I asked the second question kind of jokingly, uh, but isn't the depth on your scout team hasn't hasn't it just been destroyed? Uh, the, basically, we got two rotations. <laughs> As a coach, you kind of want two of everything. You can just uh, every time you guard their stuff, they, they, you got to flip offense to defense, and, and and you got two scout teams. So <clears throat> that's kind of the way it's supposed to work. But uh, we're getting closer to that uh, point. Uh, as we speak and then one last thing uh Kerr what, what's he been like this week I mean obviously I know uh you know it's finals week so I mean has this been kind of a with that in mind has it been kind of a rough week for him to you know transition into you know becoming a, a player now uh 
I don't see that. I, I think uh, he, he's turned up a, a notch. You know, he, he understands that it's coming. And, and you know, not that he uh, didn't compete each and every day, but you can see it in his eyes that, uh, you know, he's going to be able, you know, able to compete under the lights now. So uh, he's excited and he's, uh, you know, he's excited to run the show and it's what we brought him in here to do. So, you know, uh, we're, we're, I think everybody's just holding their breath, waiting to get this Saturday so we can throw that ball in the air and yeah. get everybody uh, out there competing. Is it is it fair to say that the cur that you have out there on Saturday is the the cur you want or the cur that you anticipated to always? Well, I don't have? know. I don't know what his game legs are going to be like. You know, okay, it's, right. It's, it's just you know it's different than a cook. A cook had to sit out a, a number of uh, weeks. And we had to kind of transition him back. So uh, Kerr's practice each and every day, but he has missed those game reps, which game reps uh, and practice reps, especially when you're playing every second or third day, can be a lot different. But uh, he's got – he's done that, all that extra work, you know, you know, working on his game and, and makes up uh, all that mileage that uh, he misses in the games by, you know, working with our strength and conditioning coach each and every day to, to shore all that up. So I don't anticipate him having too much of a problem transition. Okay. Thank you, Coach. Appreciate it. Well, if there are no further questions, we will end with Mike Casazza. Josh, I just want to make sure I have all this straight. Have you have you asked the NCAA for like concrete, black and white, what happens if, or are you just waiting for them to give you an edict? Like, how does this go right now? I understand like what you want to hear, but like, have you asked them? Or are you just waiting on them? Or it is even that? I think there's a there's a lot of schools that have asked that exact question. So um, I don't want to say I anticipate today, but I would, I, I think it'd be shameful if we didn't hear by today or tomorrow, uh, some exact clarification because there are a lot of people that are affected, uh, as part of this rule. All right. Thanks. Thanks everyone for calling in. Appreciate it.